Hello everyone. Okay, I'm going to bring to you the Sunday School Lesson, Lesson 5, first Sunday in October. And um, these last few lessons, we know they have been on, if you've been following, have been on obedience. And this um, week's lesson is um, on obedience and worshiping God alone. Um, the lesson text is coming from Exodus, the 20th chapter, chapter verses 1 through 11. The golden text reads, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Gods in little g, which lets you know that it's not our God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We have two outlines for this lesson. Um, the only God, um, that's Exodus 21 through 6. And um, the second outline is God's name in the Sabbath. And that's um, Exodus 27 through 11 going to whisper a word of prayer then we're going to get into the lesson thank you lord god um thank you for this day day which we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again lord i pray that we all make the best of this day to bring glory to your name lord as you give us your word help us to understand and to live according to to your commands lord the commands that you give us lord i pray that this lesson touches our hearts that we may continue to to live a holy life um, as you have commanded us to do. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, um, we have verses 1 through 11 coming from Exodus, the 20th chapter. And I'm just going to read a little bit here, um, just a little something um, cause I know a lot of times we look at, um, the 10 commandments and, you know, when you think about it, we get the 10 commandments. Sometimes people recite the 10 commandments, but do we actually live the 10 commandments? Do we actually follow them? They are commands by God. Do we actually obey God? Um, obedience and worshiping God alone. Do we actually obey God? A lot of times we um, we recite scripture, we recite the Ten Commandments, but do we actually obey the Ten Commandments? Um, and I'm going to just read a little something here. It says, no one reading this was standing in front of Mount um, Sinai on the day God spoke and Israel received the Ten Commandments. If we had been... We would have seen a storm, a cloud, and fire on top of the mountain. We would have heard the voice of God, a voice so majestic that the people were afraid and asked Moses to relay God's messages from, from then on instead. How can we who were not at Mount Sinai centuries ago feel a sense of being commanded by God? just as surely as Israel was. Let me read that again. How can we who were not at Mount Sinai centuries ago feel a sense of being commanded by God just as the Israelites was, were? Um, and that's why I was just saying um, a lot of times it seems like we need um, something physical or we need to see something in order to respond but here, um, we've never seen God. We haven't heard the audible voice of God. So how can we who were not there um, feel a sense of being commanded by God? That's why I think it's hard for us, all of us, who read the word, to just completely live, live by it. Um, we love God and their standards but do we really do we really really follow the standards of God I believe if we did um there would be I think the world would be a little better off if at least if God's people who are called by his name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways seek his face um I think that we would truly follow the commands of God so I'm going to just get into the lesson, and we're going to see here that God himself spoke the words that are called the Ten Commandments. We know that God himself spoke the words of the Ten Commandments. So we have the first outline, 
which is the only God, versus um, Exodus 20, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, And God spoke all these words, saying, So God spoke these words, the Ten Commandments. He says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God, gods before me. Thou shalt make, um, shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the, unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and it's real in, and keep my commandments. Now it's real interesting where where talking about the Ten Commandments and um, and I was just asking the question you know how many of us really follow the commands of God and it was real interesting the other day um, something interesting happened and it was you know on Sundays we listen to um, gospel radio on Sundays and they always have these trivia questions and it was real funny um, the one of the trivia questions was what's the first what's the first commandment of the Ten Commandments and I knew I re I knew I knew it, but then I started thinking, what is it? This wait a minute, it's real, you know. So you wonder. So, if I had to sit and think, remember the first commandment, and then a lot of people that came on couldn't even recite the first commandment. If we can't recite the first commandment, do we even know the commandments? And if we don't know them, then how will we follow them? Well. From this day forward, as we go through this lesson, if we haven't before, let's continue to follow the commands of God and keep the commands of God. Because remember, this is God speaking. God spoke these words. So the first um, outline, the only God. God is was telling Israel, um, he was letting them know, I'm the one who bought you up out of the land of Egypt. He said, you know, he, he just had, sometimes we always have to be reminded um, and God had to remind them of um, pretty much who he is. I'm the one that bought you out of the land of Egypt, not me, God. I'm the one that bought you out of the land of um, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. He says, and thou shalt have no other gods before me. No one else did this for you. It was me. I created you. I made you. I was the one that brought you up out of the land of bondage. He said it was me. He says, so thou shalt have no other gods before me. Um, you know, um, a lot of times we think, um, you know, we, we think, okay, God, I, God, I don't have no other God before you. Well, we say that, but then what do we put before God? Anything we put before God pretty much becomes our God because that's what we worship. We worship things. We worship people. We worship um, just things in this world, things in this life. But our worship is to be to the only one true living God. And God says, thou shalt um, have no, no other gods before me. And then God went on to tell them, um, and which is what he's telling us, thou shalt have no other God before me because I was the one that created you. No one else created you. No one in this world. No man. No animal. Nothing. They didn't create you. I did. He says, so thou shalt not have. This is a command from God. He tells us, no other God. Thou shalt not have no other gods. And then he goes on to verse 4 and he says, thou shalt not make it. He says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Um, thou shalt not bow, bow thyself down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. And I'm going to go back a little bit. Because as we, okay, coming to this lesson, and we talk about the Ten Commandments. Um, the first thing we think about is, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. And that's what I thought about when they had the trivia question on the radio station about what's the first commandment. And some of this stuff really gets you to think, Wow. I really need to get it together, but um, but here God is is basically talking about Himself. Everything here is about God 
himself and and worship him and worship him only and that's what he wanted israel to know and that's what he wants us to know thou should have no other god before me no one not even yourself you know because yourself can become a god to you you know we worship things we worship ourselves we we do everything for ourselves but what are we doing for god he tells us not to have another god for then he says thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image he said that any likeness um of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or he says thou shalt not bow thyself to them nor serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children un unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me so he's saying he visits um the iniquity of the fathers upon the third and fourth generations um, of them that hate me. But then he also says, going to the sixth verse, he says, but I show mercy to them that love me, to those that love me and keep my commandments. So God, um, going to the expositor, God was adamantly clear that he did not want Israel to make any material representation of him. There is no material representation that can be um, that can represent God. He says, don't do that. Um, there was no way such rep representation could be accurate. There's no way. He said he spelled it out to them. And that's a lot of times what God has to do for us. Sometimes we don't listen. You got to spell it out in detail. I know a lot of times, you know, people avoid going to church or they feel they don't need to go to church. Because I know people who say, well, I don't have to go to church just to show I love God. Well, if you do love God, you should want to go to church and fellowship with those who have like minds, um, such as yourself, those that want to worship God. Um, so here he had to spell it out to them in detail just to be certain that they understood um, that they were not to make any image based on the things in heaven above or the um, or on earth beneath. This would include stars, planets, birds, and perhaps even angels, all of which occupy the heavens. Nor were they to make any images of animals, insects, or creepy things. Because you know, a lot of times you do have people, you have cultures, and you have people who make objects, and they worship those objects. Sometimes they pray to those objects, they worship those objects. But God is saying, he had to... He had to um, spill it out to him. He says, "You no, not even stars, planets, birds, um, animals, insects, or any creeping things. He says, um, nor were they to make images of a fish. He said, God was communicating to them that he simply cannot be adequately represented by anything man can see. So you see, God cannot be represented by anything that man can see. We can't see God, but we can feel his presence. We know he's there. So that lets you know if you're worshiping anything that you can see, you know it's not God. And he tells you not to do that. Um, he said, so they should try avoiding doing so. The use of such idols would be misleading and cause them to have the wrong concepts and therefore the wrong practices, of course. Because if you think you're worshiping God, you're going to have the wrong concepts and you're going to have the wrong practices because you're not worshiping God the one true um, God. His command was clear. He says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. He says, this is the logical follow-up to the first command right here. Because if he's saying, so now we know what the first command is. What's the first command? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment. And I knew it, but then I kept thinking, okay, thou shalt not kill Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So, you know, you think of those Ten Commandments. But the first commandment is, Thou shalt have no other God before me. So, this commandment right here goes hand in hand with that. When he says, Thou shalt not um, make any any graven image of any likeness in, in anything in heaven. So, basically, anything you can see, you cannot make um, that out to be God. There is no way that that can represent who God is. Um, making images would lead them to into disobeying the first command. Of course, if you because if you're um, you have images, so he had to he had to, he just had to because God is a, a honest God. 
God is loving, God is caring, and God is going to give it to you straight. So you can't say, oh, well, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know that this was considered a God. Well, he, he, he told you straight out in the commandments. Go to Exodus 20. And he told you, he says, um, you can't have any, any images. Making images will lead them, of course, to disobeying, like I said, the first command. The study of idolatry in the Old Testament is enlightening. A number of prophets repeatedly warned the Israelites about practicing um, this false religious system. Their emphasis, their emphasis was most often about the complete inability of idols to help in any way because they were man-made and had no power of their own. These idols were man-made and they had no power of their own. They could not see, they couldn't hear, nor could they speak. And they had... And then, of course, they had to be carried from this place to that place. God is everywhere. You don't have to carry him anywhere. We can't see him, but we can feel him. We can feel his spirit. Um, now we're going to see the reason for the command, and that's verses 5 and 6. Um, he says, Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, is a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon So he's. this is the reason. He says, I'm a jealous God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. He says, visiting um, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation to them that hate me. He said, but also showing mercy unto those who love me and keep my commandments. Um, when people turn to idolatry, the proper worship of God is jeopardized. And we know that the proper worship of God is jeopardized. When a generation turns from God, the generations that follow will be affected. Oh, God. So true today. Let me read this again. When a generation turns from God, the generations that follow will be affected. Look at how they've taken prayer out of schools. And they let one person bring a rule in to take prayers out of school. And look at all the chaos that happens in schools. Look at all the chaos in the world. You want to take prayer out of everything. And so now when you look at those generations that turn from God and the generations to come, you have um, people who don't even have don't they know god they say they know god but they won't go to church they don't make their children go to church so just think um when a generation turns from god the generations to follow it's just gonna get worse and i just feel that um baby girl 19 years old my youngest daughter 19 years old taylor's 19 and when she starts having children her children have children i honestly believe that nobody in that time most likely won't be going. Look at the churches now. We're all getting older. There are no young people, at least in, in the churches that we, we're around. You, you, you rarely see young people. The young people are the ones that's going to have to leave the church in a minute. But when you have people, generations. And see, this is generations, not just something that happened overnight. It's generations. Because, you know, children watch what they see older people do. What they see adults do. And they follow. So... When you see generations that turn from God, the generations that follow will be affected. Whatever children see their parents or other influential adults do, they will be inclined to imitate. You know kids imitate. That's what they do. They imitate. So that's why they have to be taught. And that's why you have to live in such a way that your children see how you live. And then they should want to imitate that. But you notice that people always imitate the bad. They don't never want to imitate the good. But continue to live your life in front of your children so that they may imitate the good and continue to carry this gospel on to, the, to a dying world. Deuteronomy 24, 16 states, The father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the father. Um, every man shall be put to death for his own sins. So we're accountable for our own sins. I'm not accountable for my child. My child is not accountable for mine. We're accountable for for our own sins. God's pronouncement about visiting iniquity of I'm sorry, God's pronouncement about visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children um unto the third and fourth generation um of them that hate me. It's not an it's it's not an announcement of direct punishment. It's but a, but it's a warning concerning the natural influence that parents have on their children. So we need to be careful. God says, thou shalt have another God before me. And he tells them, don't make any image, anything that's supposed to be like me. You don't, don't do that. I command you. 
And when God commands you, we have to be obedient to his man. So now I'm going to go to the second outline, which is God's name in the Sabbath. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all the work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor um, thy son nor thy daughter, thy maidservant nor thy maidservant, nor, I'm sorry, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within the gates. He says, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, um, the sea, and all that is in them, all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord um, blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. We know that um, the Sabbath day is a day that's set apart. Um, and, th and this day was set apart for rest. Now, um, respecting the Lord's name, a lot of times... Even us as Christians don't don't really have respect for God's name. We use it kind of loosely, which is so um, disrespectful, um, first of all. And knowing who God is, we need to show the utmost respect for God. Now, respecting God's name. Um, and God said unto Moses, he says, I am that I am. And he said, thus, thus shalt thou, I'm sorry, this is what you should say to the children of Israel. This is what he told Moses. He says, tell them I am sent me. Okay, sent me unto you. And God said more unto Moses. Um, thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel. He says, say this to the children of Israel. The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He says, has sent me un unto you. He said, this is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. He says, this was God's revelation of himself um, as Yahweh to Moses. God specifically stated that his name should never be used lightly or frivolously. And a lot of times that, that is exactly what we do. We do use God's name lightly and a lot of times frivolously. Um, it is obvious that when God told Moses the, the name, um, he was to use with the people of Israel. He meant it. He meant it to cause a sense of wonder, amazement, and hope. Um, it was to reassure Israel that he was indeed present and coming to their assistance. And that's also with God. His name brings us hope, assurance, to let us know that He is with us. It is sad um, that in our day there is often little or no respect for God's name. There's often little or no respect for God's name, even among the church. A lot of times we, we I'm going to say, we play too much. Um, the word is not going to take us serious because we play too much. Um, we don't really hold God's name with the utmost, the utmost respect, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to, you know, use God's name with the utmost respect. But that's not what we do. We as believers need to be especially careful about this as we endeavor to counteract the world and be a testimony to it. We're supposed to be a testimony to the world. We're not supposed to be exactly like them and live like them. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. So we're not supposed to um, be like them. We're supposed to be a testimony to the world. Um, respecting the Sabbath. This is not the first time the Sabbath was named as a holy day. When God gave Israel manna, Every day, they were to gather just enough for that day. I'm sorry. Um, every day that they were to gather, that was when they, the manna. So every day that they were to gather just enough for that day's use. On the sixth day, however, they were to, they were to gather enough for two days. Because, of course, the next day would be the Sabbath and they were not supposed to do any work. Um, but there would be no manna on the seventh day. Tomorrow is the, is the, is the rest of the holy sabbath unto the lord bake that which you will bake today and boil that which you will boil he said whatever remains um lay it up to be kept until the morning the sabbath day was to be held as a day set apart from the other days of the week all work was to be done on the sixth day the hebrew um word for sabbath um it means intermission um it was something I was going to read that I wanted to read to you. And it was, 
talking about the Sabbath day, which was, um, let me, if something I want to read on the Sabbath. Um, let me just read this. The word holy in the Bible carries with it the idea of being set apart. The, the God of Scripture stands far above the deities of the world. Um, the pagan idols um, lifeless and po are, are lifeless and powerless. The God of the Bible is active and powerful in the midst of his people. He is like no man-made deity. He is righteous and hates sin. The world wants to worship and do things that are wrong at the same time. They do. The world wants to worship and do things that are wrong at the same time. Our God says it's not, it is not possible to worship him and hold on to sin. It's just not possible. He has expectations of us if we profess allegiance to him. Um, Israel was expected to keep their side of the covenant and respect God's holiness. God called Israel to be a holy people for he um, himself is holy. He wanted Israel to be an incomparable people following an incomparable God. We too, are, we too are called to follow this God who shows us his nature through his covenant. Um, so let me just go back, go back here. Um, six days work um, may be done. Seventh day, the Sabbath, holy, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign um, between me and the children of Israel forever. For six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested um, and was refreshed. Deuteronomy 5 and 15 adds this, And remember that thou was a, was a servant in the land of Egypt, that the Lord that God brought thee out of then out of um out I'm sorry, brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord commanded that commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. As long as Israel had been into in slavery, they had not been allowed um a day's rest. Their observance of the Sabbath day was also a cause of praise to their God for his mighty deliverance. That gave them the freedom that they could enjoy at the Exodus. All of the Ten Commandments, except for um, this one, is reiterated in the New Testament. And then there are those who teach that we should continue to worship on the seventh day. Jesus rose from the death on the first day of the week. And immediately his followers began to gather on um, that day instead of the seventh. So, can, you know, um, so I know we talk about the Sabbath day being the sixth day. And you know that um, when the Ten Commandments, you know, God set the, the Sabbath, the Sabbath was set. Um, it was for the, for the Israelites. Um, and we know that we worship on a Sunday or, or our Sabbath is Sunday, which is the Christian Sabbath. But, um, you know, go back and, and look it up and um, do some research on the Sabbath. And so you can get a better understanding because, you know, we argue about, you know, the Sabbath and what day is the Sabbath. Um, but the Sabbath is to be holy, set apart, to do no work in. So this lesson, obedience, this lesson is, is obedience and work to worship God only. We are to worship God only. We are not to worship any idols. We are not to make any images. God made it clear. This is his command. We must continue to follow his command. Um, we must continue to lead, lead, I'm sorry, live holy lives that someone may follow us and keep this going. We got to keep this going. We can't let it die down. Um, but God's not going to let his word return void. So he's always going to have someone out there that he can reach because everyone will know before he comes back, everyone will know who God is. Everyone will know who Jesus is. So I pray that this lesson helps you and blesses you. Um, let us continue to worship God. Let us continue to worship God only. Um, no other gods before him. Only the true living God. Because remember, he's the one that created you. And he loves you. He chose you. So let's continue to be obedient to God and worship only God. What's the first commandment? 
Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer.